hello all this is pranam today i will be explaining about the interrupts in 8086 and its types so first of all let's see what is an interrupt an interrupt is an external asynchronous signal requiring a need for attention by software or hardware it allows a way of interrupting the current task so that we can execute something more important there are 256 interrupts in 8086 they are extremely important for working of any processor an interrupt is a condition that makes the processor execute an isr where isr stands for interrupt service routine there are altogether 256 interrupts in the 8086 processor and every interrupt has its own isr address the processor has to store 256 isr address in the memory called as ivt ivt stands for interrupt vector table ivt contains all the addresses of isr from int0 to int255 it vectors the processor to go to the isr hence the name interrupt vector table the starting address of ivt is 00000h for every interrupts there are 4 bytes so for 256 interrupts there will be 256 into 4 that is equal to 1024 bytes therefore the size of ivt is 1 kb okay so now we will see the types of interrupts the first five interrupts are dedicated interrupts they are used by 8086 int5 to int31 are reserved by intel for future processors int32 to 255 are called user defined it's for user defined devices like keyboard mouse etc now let's see the dedicated interrupts so the first dedicated interrupt is divide by 0 interrupt that is type 0 interrupt int 00 is invoked by the microprocessor whenever there is an attempt to divide a number by 0 isr is responsible for displaying the message divide error on the screen now let's see the type 1 interrupt that is single step interrupt in single step mode a system will stop after it executes each instruction and waits for further direction from us the 8086 trap flag and type 1 interrupt response make it quite easy to implement a single step feature in an 8086 based system for single stepping the trap flag must be set to 1 The job of ISR is to dump the registers on the screen. The trap flag is reset when the 8086 does a type 1 interrupt. So the single step mode will be disabled during the interrupt service procedure. Now let's see the type 2 interrupt that is non maskable interrupt. The 8086 will automatically do a type 2 interrupt response when it receives a low to high transition on its nmi input pin the non maskable name given to this input pin on the 8086 means that the type 2 interrupt response cannot be disabled by any program instructions we use it to signal the 8086 that some condition in an external system must be taken care of for example have a pressure sensor on a large steam boiler connected to the nmi input if the pressure goes above some preset limit the sensor will send an interrupt signal to the 8086 the type 2 interrupt service procedure for this case might turn off the fuel to the boiler open a pressure relief valve and sound an alarm now let's see the type 3 interrupt that is the breakpoint interrupt 
the main use of the type 3 interrupt is to implement a breakpoint function in a system. A breakpoint is used to examine the CPU and memory after the execution of a group of instructions. When you insert a breakpoint, the system executes the instructions up to the breakpoint and then goes to the breakpoint procedure. The breakpoint feature executes all the instructions up to the inserted breakpoint and then stops the execution. Depending on the system, it may then send the register contents to the CRT display and wait for the next command from the user. Now let's see the type 4 interrupt that is the overflow interrupt. INT4 interrupt represents the overflow condition. It occurs when the results are out of the signed numbers. So when the microprocessor does all these interrupts, the 8086 processor will push the flags on the stack then reset the trap flag and the interrupt flag and then it pushes the CS value and the IP value for the next instruction on the stack. The interrupts from type 5 to type 31 are reserved for other advanced microprocessors and the interrupts from 32 to type 255 are available for hardware and software interrupts. So uh, now let's look at the software interrupt application. Uh, consider the example of uh, sending the characters to the printer. The DX, H and AL registers are used to pass the required parameters to the procedure. The procedure is used for two different operations, initializing the printer port and sending a character to the printer. The operation performed by the procedure is determined by the number passed to the procedure in the AH register. H is equal to 1 means initialize the printer port. H is equal to 0 means print the characters in AL. And H is equal to 2 means read the printer status. If an attempt to print a character was not successful for some reason, such as the printer not being turned on, not being selected, or being busy, 0 1 is returned in AH. Now let's consider the hardware interrupt applications. Under this, Consider simple interrupt data input. One of the most common uses of interrupt is to relieve a CPU of burden of polling. In a computer, a polled interrupt is a specific type of input-output interrupt that notifies the part of computer containing the input-output interface that a device is ready to be read or not. To refresh your memory, polling works as follows. The strobe or data ready signal from some external device is connected to an input port line on the microcomputer. The microcomputer uses a program loop to read and test the port line over and over until the data ready signal is found to be asserted. The microcomputer then exits the polling loop and reads in the data from the external device. The disadvantage of polled input or output is that while the microcomputer is polling the strobe or data ready signal, it cannot easily be doing other tasks. The microcomputer then goes about doing its other tasks until it is interrupted by a data ready signal from the external device. An interrupt service procedure can read in or send out the desired data in a few microseconds and return execution to the interrupted program. Now let's look at the diagram on the screen. For our example here, we will connect the key pressure strobe to the NMI interrupt input of the 8086 on an SDK86. The NMI input is usually reserved for re responding to a power failure or some other catastrophic conditions. However, since we are not expecting any catastrophic condition to befall our SDK86, we choose to use this input because it does not require an external hardware device to insert the interrupt type as does the in INTR input. The SDK86 schematics in earlier figure shows the circuitry normally connected to the NMI input. This circuitry is designed so that you can produce an NMI interrupt by pressing a key on the hex keypad. When this key is pressed, the input of the 
74LS14 inverter will be made low and the output of the inverter will go high. The low to high transition on the NMI input causes the 8086 to automatically do an NMI interrupt. Now let's see the counting applications of interrupt. As a simple example of the use of an interrupt input for counting, suppose that we are using an 8086 to control a printed circuit board making machine in our computerized electronics factory. Further suppose that we want to detect each finished board as it comes out of the machine and to keep account with the number of boards fed in. This way we can determine if any boards were lost in the machine. To do this count on an interrupt basis all we have to do is to detect when a board passes out of the machine and send an interrupt signal to an interrupt input on the 8086. The interrupt service procedure for that input can simply increment the board count stored in a named memory location. To detect a board coming out of the machine, we use an infrared LED, a photoregister and two conditioning gates. The circuit diagram is as shown on the screen. The LED is positioned over the track where the boards come out and the photoregister is positioned below the track. When no board is between the LED and the photoregister, the light from the LED will strike the photoregister and turn it on. The collector of the photoregister will then be low as will the input NMI input on the 8086. When a board passes between the LED and photoregister, the light will not reach the photoregister and turn it off. The collector of the photoregister will then go high and so will the signal on the NMI input of the 8086. When the 8086 receives the low to high signal on its NMI input, it will automatically do a type 2 interrupt response. Now let's see the timing applications of the interrupt. In this, it is shown that how delay loop would be used to set the time between the microcomputer operations. In the example, we use a delay loop to take in data samples at 1 millisecond intervals. The obvious disadvantage of a delay loop is that while the microcomputer is stuck in the delay loop, it cannot be easily doing other useful work. In many cases, a delay loop would be a waste of the microcomputer's valuable time, so we use an interrupt approach. Suppose for example that in our 8086 controlled printed circuit board making machine, we need to check the pH of a solution approximately every 4 minutes. If we used a delay loop to count off the 4 minutes, either the 8086 wouldn't be able to do much else or we would have the some difficult calculations to figure out at what points in the program is to check the pH. To solve this problem all we have to do is to connect a simple 1 hertz pulse source to an interrupt input as shown on the screen. This 555 timer circuit is not very accurate but it is inexpensive and it is good enough for this application. The 555 timer will send an interrupt signal to the 8086 NMI input approximately once every second. An interrupt procedure is used to keep a count of how many NMI interrupts have occurred. This count is equal to the number of seconds that have passed.